by correct correct people now welcome back again ah waiting this papa talking pa ek clacking a bad boari you go no say boari no only wicked but they at least this man poor he hearts talk the way boari to disrespect him and he talk one to be say he shock me Say even Buari, no evil wish and happy birthday. My people mo kuna listen to where this our papa talk. Me kuna I stand to be service to the Almighty God for keeping me alive at the time when I thought it was the end. But I have not been celebrating as he told you. My birthdays for some time now because of these two bug girls. I remember we were at the national conference one morning in the afternoon in the assembly. That was the same day Yanya somewhere was born. So we were told by one Miss Bilikusu, Maguru, that I was general, said that they would just kidnapped or adopted over 200 Chibo girls who were ready to take the examination in Chibo. And uh, the late Alaji Gambo Jemeta, Inspector General of Police at that time, Inspector uh, uh, General of Police, asked me to move a motion on the Chibo girl, sympathizing with the parents and asking the government to take action immediately to bring these girls back. So, since most of these girls was, have not been brought back, I thought it was not necessary for me to celebrate my birthdays. Because in places, in more civilized places, like the United States of America, England, one American missing is America that is missing. Nigeria, if 1,000 people are killed, people will ask, from what tribe? From what state? They're not worried. See, everything must go on. Nobody cares in this country. So today, I thought it was very, very necessary for me to give an address open address to Mr. President, President Mohamed Buhari, about his government, how he failed in his government, particularly ignoring the Niger Delta, treating them with ignominy, yet we produce everything with the economy of the with surviving the economy of this country. And I thought he has said he has he scored hundred percent. Done very well. But those of us who felt that he did not do well should not keep quiet. Should say it. I I, I saw on the twenty fifth or twenty sixth on the arrival television, Femi, I didn't know, is additional, saying that I was anti, when they arise, confronted him with the statement I made on my birthday. He said I was anti, I've always been anti Buhari's government. So I now understand why these people this particular government has been doing things to humiliate me, treating me with ignominy as a person. At the age of about 90, 1991, I was sitting down in my bedroom with some friends, 12 o'clock, on the 4th of this, uh, what date? September. September. They said, Two buses of 
policemen, loaded with policemen with their guns, armed policemen. I have come to this my compound and they took, took, took positions. Three of them came up with a warrant that uh, signed by the magistrate, by a magistrate, that they've come to search my house for stockpiling ammunitions in my house sent to me from the Delta. I said, go ahead. So, so they left. First of all, I introduced myself to them. They apologized that they heard of me, but they didn't know that I was the one they were coming to search his house. However, they ordered it from above. I said, go ahead. So they went down to search my house. It took them two hours. My secretary, Dr. Cook, Dr. Cook, I sent her to the bank. They said they must enter her room to find out. So I have to send a car to the bank to bring her back. And they searched everything. At the end, they said they found nothing. But I must sign the statement, produce three responsible people to sign the document. Um, luckily, a galley was here, yeah, Ambassador Galley, former permanent secretary of power, was ready to sign. My nephew, Dr. Mulade, registrar of uh, Maritime University of Krenkoko, was also here, so he signed. And I think a Makwara also signed, former di uh, director in MTA. Then I said, I want a copy of the report. So my people, my secretary and my nephew, I mentioned, followed them to Gusape, where they had their office. They went in. So they went up. And the man who sent them, their boss, said that, that uh, and they told uh, they told him we found nothing. Then he phoned the headquarters that they found nothing. By then, the, the press, everybody had come to this house. Later they left. I protested to. President Buhari, through my lawyer, and apart, they sent one Deputy Inspector of General of Police, two AIGs, and some commissioners to come and apologize to me. And to, they didn't send them. I said, You are lying. To cut a long story short, the joy youths in Potakot, in Bayasa, in uh, Wari, Delta, and so on, were demonstrating that they should leave my house. So I can now see whenever you. Um, this man said that I was anti Bowari's government for saying that they are neglecting Niger Delta, which produces the golden egg. Mm. I also remember that uh, all presidents for some time, from a person job and so on, were congratulating me on my birthday anniversary when I got became 80 in 2007 or so. And, uh, but when President Buhari took office, 
They refuse to congratulate me. I remember, I don't want to be personal, one of my boys I admire was also celebrating his uh, 67th birthday. Another friend's mother was celebrating. The president congratulated them. I was 90 or two, 89. He did not congratulate me. So in 2091, I told Mr. President, I said, look, you have not been congratulating me. I've served this country for about 70 years. And it doesn't mean anything to you. I said, I knew about 30 senior army officers in Nigeria before when you were a young officer. Three ministers who served with me in General Gawan's uh, government became head of state and president of this country. General Morita Mohammed became president. Uh, uh, head of state of this country, followed by Abbasanjo, then he became president. Alaji Chagari was the minister of finance. He became president. If I, were, if I had come from another ethnic group who think that this country belonged to them, those of us as second class citizens, I, I see no reason why Buhari will not congratulate me. Or will not even apologize to me when my house was raided for no just cause. I've just given you brief background to show to you that this government has treated me, humiliated me, and so on. But I have the last one I should tell you, personally. When the Niger Delta Avengers were harassing the creeks, vandalizing pipeline and so on, the, the, the production of oil in this country <clears throat> went down. They sent, the army sent Operation Crocodile smile to the Delta. They couldn't do anything. I traveled with the chief of army staff, Borota, General Borota, from Benin City. He told me that he had just returned from Sapele, where he commissioned Operation Crocodile Smile to fight the youth who were fertilizing. So we traveled together to Abuja. But when I saw things were getting too bad, I summoned a meeting of all South South to pity and worry. Some governors attended, particularly my own. Then we took a resolution to appeal to the youth. If you destroy this pipeline, you're also destroying yourself. Stop. We'll take up your matter with Mr. President. Luckily, they agreed. So on the 1st of November 2016, I led a delegation of 100, including first class chiefs, senators, ministers, Prominent citizens, as I was saying, we decided, as I said, to pay him a visit, to present to him a 16 point program. Our desires, what will make the Niger Delta a better place. You know, we got to the pilot gate. I'm witnessing that in the villa. All the people that uh, were delegates 
were screened in. I was the first to present myself. They said I should sit down first. At the end, they were not willing to check me in. Ambassador Gali, accompanied by the late um, Alabo Graham Douglas, appealed to them to, if this man does not go in, there will be no meeting. All these people have been checked in. So they take their phone, phone with their boss, whoever he was, before I was allowed to go in. And when I got there, I was already late. Immediately I stepped in, the president came in. Yet I made a speech to see that there was peace in this country. That to see that the unity of this country was not disturbed. But these are the issues bothering me. This is in point program which Pandey presented to Mr. President. President did not look at them. He agreed. We took photograph with him. Held a uh, co uh, joint co press conference together. It was when he was on medical trip to London and the Vice President was acting. It was then the Vice President recognize our 16 point program that the government would have accepted them. So he started touring the Niger Delta, where he made statements in New York that the OICs, the Overseas Oil Company, will relocate directed to relocate the operational headquarters to the Niger Delta. Possibly one would go to Eket. What is the name of that company? Mobile. 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 One will go to uh, Bayasa State, IG. And um, Chevron will go to Wally. Then when you go to Bayasa State, in a town hall meeting, he stated that modular refineries will be established to replace the illegal refinery being operated by the, our people, the old communities. And we didn't know that they were going to commercialize them. Where will our boys have money to establish? Modular refineries. We had the last meeting with him as acting president on the 3rd of August 2017, where we started everything. But when um, Mr. President returned from London, who are we? I was very happy yesterday and two days ago when I listened to President Uhuru Kenyatta, former president of Kenya, teaching them a lesson how a president should rule his country. You do not discriminate against other people. All the tribes that made Kenya participated in his government. He said he won election against Odiga Odiga. And there was no, no, he discussed that people were murmuring. There was this quietness in the, the, the country. So he said, am I president of Kenya? Or where do I belong to? So he called his opposition leader. That's how he formed the government where every Kenyan was recognized. So discuss with your people. Dialogue with them. You can't ignore people. You can't treat some people as second class citizens. You told the whole world that you belong to Nigeria, to all Nigerians, but you do not belong to some people. But now we discover that was not true. 
President Muhammad Buhari belong to a group of people in Nigeria. He does not belong to all Nigerians. A situation where you pick people to appoint. They must come from one tribe. They must come to another group. And if people are not ready to speak, I will speak. I've just completed a book. This is a book on my, my memoirs, Brutally Frank. And in that book, everything I'm telling you now, they're all there. Did Nigeria belong to all of us? Some of us come from the areas where our parents were ruling their own areas. But today, the Niger Delta people that belong to people like a traditional ruler like King Jaja of Opobo, Nana of Olum of uh, Wari, of Baverami, she's my pregnant mom, of my, my great grandfather, went to Lugard and told him that there was too much discrimination. And why today our big fathers are no longer there? We are now second class citizens. Every the oil industry has been taken over by Nigerians who are not Niger Delta. The headquarters today they could have no lucky of Victoria Island without the oil companies. Chevron has an estate in Bagada for their workers. They pay their tax there and they don't want. So, but when the vice president says so, acting president, the Badamin Biaminlas complaining they are, it will never happen. We laughed. But when people who live in Lagos, who were born in Lagos, wanted to vote, in the last election, they said, go to your state, go to your home. Who is fooling who in this country? If a Nigerian of equal status, equal citizens, find himself that he cannot rise to the highest position or to position which he is qualified for, and it's being denied because of his tribe, because of his religion, then we have no country. So, with roads, um, um, Fajola, the Minister of Works and Housing, has been developing roads in the north, in the southwest, and some of them in the south. East. He had never one day visited the Niger Delta. The East West Road is about 12 years old now. For the eight years of Mohammed Buhari's government, he did not, nothing was done to that place. Today you cannot pass the East West Road. Yet, it is the most important economic road in Nigeria. Because it is situated in the Niger Delta, nobody looks at it again. Yet you spend money building roads from uh, Kano to Mediguri, building roads from uh, Ife to Ibadan, everywhere. The east, uh, the the road, um, the express road from Lagos to Ibadan. You can imagine how much money had been spent. Recently, N NNPC took some roads to be constructed. No road from the Niger Delta was taken. Until a month of the time of their going, NNPC said they've taken over Bini Wari Road. When after the people have demonstrated, close the road. So where who is this civil? Are we going to be oppressed, subjugated by whom? Not in my lifetime. I've always said. If you are 70 and above, you are the patch of lunch, waiting for your body to pass. Now I'm 96. I've collected my body in pass. 
I fear nobody. I fear only God. I respect people. I'm warning. Whoever is ruling this country, Niger Delta people will no longer accept this type of humiliation and subjugation. NDDC was created in 2000. I was party to it, Baton Joe um, and uh, myself, uh, Senator Brume, late, and Chief Dapabli. We met, Baton Joe invited us in, nine, in, 20, in 2000 to draft the bill on NDDC. How he brought in Ondo State, Abia State, and Imo State. We questioned him. He said the Northerners were opposed to the, to the bill. They also wanted such type of thing for uh, Hiroro Dam or something like that. So he brought in Ondo State, Abia State, and Imo State to cataract their majority. So I said, if oil is discovered in Sokoto tomorrow, it will be part of Niger Delta. So he laughed. He said, let's have what we That's why we have NDDC today. Today, three members of the board of, direct of directors must come from non-oil producing states. And they are the people squandering all the money. All the board members. How many people in that time are benefited? Look at the marginal oil field. We are strangers in our own home. The marginal oil field. As if Vauna wants to become governor of, uh, for a second time in Bayasa State, who will vote for him? 57 uh, marginal oil field. He knows who he gave them to. But perhaps he has collected enough funds and so on. He now wants to contest to become governor because he's the all in all. I think at this stage of my life, I must speak my mind. So, no few he just, Niger Delta, got the marginal oil free. The oil blocks, there are 40, 47 oil blocks. Only Lulu Bridge from River State has an oil block. A man like Mike, Mike Ibru, very wealthy man in this country at the time, applied for, applied for oil block. They didn't give him. So you begin to ask yourself. About 23 senior officers in an NPC, all from one ethnic group. We have none. Our people are posted to um, not so important uh, section. There was one uh, young Gubali. I mentioned it in my open letter to Buhari when he, he gave a Biola this uh, title that he recognized June 12. I wrote him an open letter and I said, look at what you have done. You disgrace the chief justice of Nigeria because he came from the Midwest, the Niger Delta, nobody will talk. Humiliated him, removed him, put somebody else, then he created the judiciary. There's no way we're president of a country appoints the Chief Justice of Nigeria. This he did, calling that for um, suspended the other one and took this man. No game was taken to a court to be tried which he has no proper status. Humiliated the man out of it. A young lady from a quiet bomb was in the stock book. I don't know what they call that place. Stock exchange. Yeah. Eh? Stock, stock, 
I don't mind what they did there. They, they had a problem with the National Assembly. So this lady was there. She had served two years. The post was not to be permanent. They brought a man. I don't want to mention The name is in my, my last press conference. To take over from her. Who was working under her as a commissioner? Dr. Mrs. Azinge, she was, she was acting for about two years in CAC. They removed her. So I think that if she was having a foreign exchange, they charged her to court, for, which they never proved, simply because they wanted to put their own man. A situation where you have 14 and 17 um, security chiefs, only three from the south, 14 from one ethnic group. Is that the country we are building together? You don't fight for the independence of the unity of Nigeria through, uh, what do you call it, through discrimination, where some tribes are second class citizens, others are first class citizens. We can't. So I have written everything here, but you know, in my press conference, I normally like to speak last. <laughs> but today is the last day of Muhammad Buhari. I must send him a message. That is, you should not say Huru. Our people in the Niger Delta are disappointed. So, the, um, the secretary, uh, the... Oh, the secretary. The, uh, the uh, publicity secretary of Pandex, L. Robinson, Ken Robinson, will now read what I've written. But I've spoken my mind trying to cover this paper. Thank you. And this is BOD TV Board. In case the first time you come here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more uploads.